Hello, everybody. Good to be with you. So a retired psychologist in Canada who works with cancer patients has asked me to cut a video on healing cancer. Uh, his idea is that um, he helps people to, to, to utilize the mind to assist the body in, in healing. And he's familiar with my work and uh, read Awaken Now and be, um, the uh, Book of Undoing and, and this and that. And so he wanted me to cut a video. And so I've agreed to do it, obviously. Here I am. And there's one line that I want you to hear because I think it exemplifies from his letter that I think exemplifies what a lot of people believe about uh, enlightenment or awakening or the spiritual path or spirituality in general. And it, it says, and he says, I know you prefer frank talk, so you won't mind if I say our folks would not be satisfied to be told that they just need to realize their oneness and they won't care about their cancer anymore. And so I thought about it and I've really given it quite a bit of thought as to what I could, what kind of video I could do that might assist him and to assist the cancer patients. And then I got to thinking about the, the cancer patients that I've had, because I've had a number of cancer patients. I've had some terminal patients with cancer and other diseases. And I thought about what did I actually do to work with them? And what I did with them uh, was to help them wake up to their oneness, uh, but not with the promise that they wouldn't care about their cancer anymore. See, that would be, that's preposterous. That's, that's not healing, that's denial. <laughs> and I hope, that, I hope that I'm not guilty of helping people do that. So, but when we talk about waking up to your oneness, right, it's just not what people think. It's exactly the opposite of what people think, which is they believe that this body, this person is going to wake up to discover that uh, they're going to they're going to spot oneness somewhere around here, and that they are going to somehow merge with oneness, join oneness, uh, become one with oneness, whatever. And I just want to point out that that's actually impossible because they're the only thing that could spot oneness would be oneness. And when you're oneness, there's no over there, over there. So it's impossible to spot oneness over there. You can only spot oneness here. See, because the, the thing that's misunderstood is that, we, is that the, 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 the personality, what I call the character, is always waiting for, is looking for a big shift so that it can accept uh, its position in the world uh, or, or actually even better than that, it could think like I did, which was when it meant that you could basically levitate over all your problems. <laughs> or that everyone would wake up. I was in a lot of trouble when I woke up and everybody would, would, would wake up and I, mean, I would wake up and everybody would see what a nice guy I was and they'd drop everything, right? And then I'd be okay. And then I could go to the jungle with my loincloth and teach my flock. And it just doesn't work like that. So... Discovering oneness is discovering what's here right now. Because this it cannot be other than oneness. I know that oneness has never expected oneness to look like this. But assuming that there is just oneness, is there any possibility that oneness could not look like this? And I think the answer is no. It has to look like this if it's oneness, because that just be the standout feature of oneness being that there's just one of them. So accepting this right now, which means accepting the ability to accept present conditions regardless of their content. I once helped a paraplegic and uh, he had been with lots and lots of people and um, I had to get him on board by helping him see right away after I told him it's a bad story. I'm sorry you had that story. I'm glad it's your story and not mine, my story. I wouldn't want it. 
But nonetheless, what we have to come to grips with is that where do you get the idea that you shouldn't be paralyzed? Because there's no evidence for that. None. And I understand that that cuts to the quick of everything. And this guy had been in, in, in bed with for close to 30 years. He'd been a mountain climber that was injured. And he had been in, he had been in resistance for 30 years. I mean, because he knew he shouldn't have been paralyzed. But the fact is, is that all the evidence pointed to the fact that he should be paralyzed because he would, was. No, there being no evidence whatsoever to the contrary. So I can remember when I had very, very severe pain from sciatica. I could not stand for more than about 10 minutes at a time. And, uh, and my, my job required me to be on my feet at that time. This was in post-awakening, but not very far into post-awakening. And it was just awful. I just didn't think I could stand it. And um, I, I had to constantly bend down, release the pressure, the tension, whatever it was, the pain. And then one day I was sitting at my table <clears throat> and I came to think, wow, I have got chronic acute pain, acute chronic pain. Who would have ever thought? I never thought that I was going to be the guy that had the chronic acute pain. I mean, I always felt like that was certainly someone else's job. But when I looked at it, I realized what, if it was somebody else's job, somebody else would be experiencing that. And that it was actually my job. That was my cross to bear. And that people wake up. I mean, people are born into uh, disfigured bodies and, and, and diseased bodies. And, and um, throughout their lives, they, people come up with just, come under the influence of terrible diseases and all this kind of thing. And it, and it always seems like it's their position to do that. And they'll, they'll understand it and get along whatever. Thank goodness it's not me. But what if it is me? What if it's my job? And that's what I came to understand that day was that it was my job actually to bear this. I didn't need to understand why but it was obvious that it was my job because that was my position. And I'm just like the quadriplegic. When I gave up resisting the idea that I shouldn't be as I was, it helped. Did he get up and walk? No. Did it make him happy that he was paralyzed? No. Did I get up and just start acting like there was the, the like the sciatic I had gone or that it was going or that it would soon pass or whatever? No, I was the same guy in the same house with the same level of pain, only it wasn't so personalized because it wasn't an accident. See, you may not believe there's oneness and I'm not saying that you need to, but let me, ask you which would be more likely do you think do you think that it was more likely that um you are somebody being asked to pretend to be oneness or that you're oneness already pretending to be somebody an individual as far as i can tell there is no individual there is a sense of individuality, but if there's oneness, is only oneness. The only thing that can have that sense of individuality is oneness. So being able to accept your conditions, this is the truth of non-duality. This is the truth of oneness, is that these conditions are as they are. The cancer is as it is. Resistance to that fact is not going to assist in any way. It's not going to help you in any way. Not going to help your, your natural systems to combat that. Because that resistance itself takes a certain sort of energy and it takes a certain position. 
what I'm saying is that the first step to relieving your pain really is in coming to understand that number one, it's not a mistake that it's your pain, that this is your job until it's not. Doesn't mean it's your job till death. It doesn't mean it's your job for, for, for a week or a month or a year, or whatever. It's your job until it's not. How will you know when your job is over, it'll be over. The cancer will be gone or you will be one way or the other. That unit will be. And uh, there's a sense that, well, this unit shouldn't be gone, but I notice that all of them go. See, that's the nature of relativity, is that everything here comes and goes. The, 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 the only thing that doesn't come and go, of course, is this space, and everything comes and goes within it. The only thing that doesn't come and go is this awareness, and everything comes and goes within it. You are this awake space, shall we say, and everything comes and goes within you, including these things. And that's tough when you believe you are one of these things instead of all of these things. <laughs> and all the dogs and cats and birds and mice. But you're not just one of these things. There's one awareness. You can count. Count how many awarenesses you can actually speak about. And you assume that that person that's looking at you across the room, you assume that there's a different awareness looking out of this head, but it's not. It's the same awareness that's looking at your head right now. I'm looking at myself right now, and so are you. We are the very same thing. That's the math of one. So if you don't believe in the math of one, that's fine. Switch, switch channels. Go find something else. But if you're interested in finding not a cure necessarily, but a relief from your present conditions, then this is the, then this, I'm suggesting this is the way to go. And I'm only suggesting that because it's worked for a lot of people prior to my coming in front of you. And it really has, it does work. So, it works because it's the truth, not because it's a trick, not because it's a strategy. It just works because it's the truth. So if you can accept that things are as they are, and you'll notice that they are. See, we can argue about whether this should be or this shouldn't be, but we can't argue about the fact that it is. There's nothing to argue about there. It is. And there's nothing to really say about it. It is. Let's see, the human beings don't spend a great deal of time with what is. Pe people tend to privilege their thoughts about what is, right? And that's where we live, is in our thoughts about what is. So I've got Parkinson's and I shouldn't have it. I've got cancer and I shouldn't have it. I've got lupus and I shouldn't have it. Whatever. I, 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 was, I was raped and I shouldn't have been. Well, just, just for your information, this one was raped. I can't find any reason why it shouldn't have been because it was. And that doesn't mean that I don't have deep feelings for other people who have PTSD and things like that from that. I'm just telling you it doesn't affect me in that way. Because, it, I can't, because I'm not in resistance to the past. Because that's what we're talking about, is that you've already got this disease. That's the reason you're here talking to me. And I don't care if the disease is nothing more than a, the addiction, addiction to the sense of separation. It's addiction to the sense of a separate self. You suffer from the, the very least that. And I bet you suffer from more than that. And I bet you think, well, unless you're the exception, which you're certainly welcome to be, but most of us will think that we shouldn't. Things shouldn't be this way, but they can't be any other way. You see, the funny thing about when you look at what is, it's just what I said. There's nothing really to say about it. There's, it, you just notice that it is. So if you look at the world right now, and how about you just drop that central thing, that central thing, that personality there, what if you were 
to drop that. And you can do it. Even if you think you can't, you can pretend like you're looking through that body instead of as that body. You can pretend that you are the, the animating presence of that body and of that, that, that cadaver and not the cadaver itself. That you are that lifelike thing. You said there's a sense of, of liveness behind your eyes where a lot of people will have it. Some people have it in the heart, but it's always pretty much going to be, it's generally going to be in the head. And there's a sense of the liveness there. But it doesn't have any structure, you'll notice. It doesn't have a shape. It doesn't have a color. It doesn't have a size. Well, that's because that this central thing that we're referring to is consciousness. And consciousness doesn't have a shape, color, or size. So what if, if only for the sake of an exercise here with me, what if you were to pretend that you were to consciousness? What if you were to just assume for the moment that you're what's looking through that body as if that body was a pair of glasses or lens, because that's exactly what it is. It's a lens and you're looking through it, but it feels like you're looking as it. You think you are this. You don't realize that this is just a, this is a point of view for something that has no point of view on its own. It just has the view of oneness. And when oneness looks at oneness, oneness cannot find anything wrong. You can try it for yourself right now. In the absence of the one who believes that they're a Bob or a Karen or a Joe or a Mary, in the, just, just let that thing go for a minute. Identify as consciousness. Just identify as this invisible, so we can say it's no thing, but it's something here, so we can't say it's nothing. Identify as this consciousness and see if you can find a problem right now. Just right now. See, we're not worried about yesterday, we're not talking about tomorrow. We're just talking about right now. Can you find a problem right now? If you were able to drop the personality, and just be this awake space here, even for a second, you'll see that you can't find anything wrong. You just can't. Because there's not anything wrong here. I don't want to say it's a perfect world because that sounds very, very Californian and flip and all that, but guess what? It's a perfect world. It really is. As seen from the God's eye view, if you will. From, is seen from the, from the view of awakeness, of consciousness, of awareness. There's just this, and what you can notice is that you can fantasize all you want, but there's no alternative to this. There really is not. No alternative to this, and there is um, no comparison to this. Yeah? Krishnamurti said all suffering begins with comparison, and boy, is he right as rain there. See, what our, what our imagination does is it tells us there's something other than this. It te- my imagination would tell me that there's a parallel reality where Fred does not have sciatica. That there's a parallel um, universe where Fred does not have um, pain. And even now, I can tell you, I mean, this is going to compare to your situation. I'm not pretending it does, but it is something I can put my hands on. I can tell you that I made up with arthritis. My elbows are completely blown. And that's a rare thing to have your elbows blown. That's what my doctor told me. He he sees hundreds of blown knees every year, but he rarely sees a blown elbow. But I was a a bookseller and um, an online bookseller. And I'd go to sales and I'd grab lots and lots of books very, very quick like this, like this. And I'd, then I'd go home and I'd lift them up some more. And then I'd go home and I'd put them up on the shelves and I'd take them off the shelves and put them in the mail. And I blew out my elbows over the 10 years that I was an online bookseller, just blew them out. I mean, the first doctor that went in told Betsy, well, it's just a mess. And then there was one guy that went into the other one, a different doctor came out and told Betsy, well, it's just a mess. And he's, and he's not getting rid of this. And we can, we can see it right there. 
So there's pain here. And I can't, I can't not experience that. I do experience that. But I don't experience it as Fred. Don't get me wrong, this unit is not fond of this pain. It falls well outside of the guidelines that this unit has for the universe's behavior. But I noticed that this unit has it. It's got this condition. But I noticed that this unit is just one part of me. Just one speck of me. And I notice that the unit has to go through what the unit has to go through because it's a perfect world that is about the truth of unity and not the dream of separation. And the truth of unity says that there's only this as it is. And I know that it's very tempting and, and, and don't get me, don't get me wrong that I'm, that I'm trying to, pole vault relativity, I'm not. What I'm trying to do is help us come to grips with the fact that relativity is our experience, no matter who or what we are. If I'm afraid, relativity is my experience. If I, if I am consciousness, relativity is still my experience. So there's no way not to deal with, with, with relativity, but does every experience within relativity, do I have to own that? Do I have to make that mine? Do I have to make that the, the thing that's happened to me that shouldn't have happened? No, I realize that, see, the, the, the temptation is to have someone come in and do some kind of little, you know, chiropractic work or some kind of surgical inquiry or whatever so that you can no longer suffer. And if I could do that for you, I would. You know, but I can't. I have limitations, a lot of limitations. We will go down into that some other time. But this, but if I speak as consciousness, then I'm speaking through the Fred unit, not as the Fred unit. And I notice that the, it's the Fred unit that is ate up with arthritis. And that's, and, and I'm sorry for the Fred unit, right? It would be good if it didn't. It's a shame that the world absolutely positively has to include a Fred unit ate up with arthritis. What do you say? How do I know? It's got it. How do I know that you're supposed to have cancer? You've got cancer. You've got Parkinson's. You've got lupus. You've got heart disease. You've got whatever it is that you've got. Wear it well. It's your job. I swear to you. This is not comfortable. This is not fun. This is not what people want me to say. I can promise you that. But I can tell you that it is freeing if you can adapt it. I'm not suggesting that you can adapt this all from this one talk, that it's going to change your life and you'll be better from now on. Anything like that, if, it, if, if awakening were to occur during this talk, great. But you're still going to notice that it, at the, in post-awakening, I had hoped that everything was going to change. My conditions would be completely different. Awakening occurred. I realized the truth of my oneness. And I realized that, damn it, none of this stuff, none of these problems went away. But then I noticed, oh, 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 oh. But I'm not that unit. I'm the consciousness. I'm, I'm not the... I'm not the cadaver, I'm the animation within the cadaver. I am that invisible force, that Tao. And I'm not a thing, I'm a verb. And I'm moving and this is part of my movement and you're part of my movement. And your disease is part of my movement. So when I woke up, what I recognized was, oh, Fred is still in a great deal of trouble. Thank God it's not me. That's true. 
I could see that Fred had a hard road to hoe, and he did. Trust me. But at first it was made doable just by recognizing that it's actually not my suffering circumstances. There are suffering circumstances and I experience them, but I experience them vicariously through this body. If I recognize that I'm inhabiting this body, I'm actually going to end up, the body may still be in pain, but I can be, the body can be in pain and I can be okay at the same time. I know that's impossible to believe, but I promise you it's the truth. I would not deign to, to would not dare to try to tell you how to forestall your pain or get rid of your pain or how to think properly so that your pain goes away. I can't know that you're not supposed to actually experience that pain. It looks to me like you are, if you are. And it looks like to me like you're supposed to until you don't. Damn it, this is no fun, is it? But it's true. What's truth is the truth of non-duality. There's truth that there's just one thing going on. Look, all the mystics have told us that for thousands of years, that there's just one thing going on. That's what most of the mystics from most traditions have always been able to agree on. The one thing they could agree on is that they're just one thing. So this one thing has got to be it. This has got to be that one thing, doesn't it? It's got to be. Unless they were just all lying to us and everything. And I can tell you that I'm lying to you if you, or you can accept the fact that I'm lying to you if you want to not believe what I'm telling you. But I've had this direct experience. I've woken up to my true nature. And I know, and I live from that true nature now. I talked to someone this morning. This will tell you something about your life. As I told her, I said, you know, that there are, that in Japan, they have cherry blossoms that bloom once a year, and it's just fantastic. There are cherry, blossoms, cherry trees everywhere. And that it is just absolutely magical when they peak. And that peak is just this long. Prior to that, they're coming in. Right after the peak, they're going out. At that peak, it's just like wonderland. And people from all over the world schedule their vacations and stuff so they can go to Japan and witness this cherry blossom festival, the particularly beautiful cities like Kyoto. But what makes that cherry blossom festival so incredible, so wonderful, so, so mind bogglingly beautiful is the fact that it wasn't here. These blossoms weren't here. They are here now and they won't be for long. It is the very nature of these, of impermanence that brings about the beauty of the world. You're being given the opportunity to focus on right now because you don't know about the future any more than I do, because I noticed that if I surrender to right now, I don't have to worry about a future because there is no future. There's only right now. And there's no problem in surrendering to the past because it's past. My friend Byron Katie says the, the, the best thing about the past is that it's over. <laughs> so I can't, I can't successfully resist the past. I just can't. And I can't successfully resist the future. I can exist. I can resist both. If I'm willing to endure a great deal of suffering without changing my conditions whatsoever. I'm not willing to do that. The ephemeral nature of life is what gives it its wonderment and its beauty. I told my friend this morning, I live my life in a cherry blossom festival. And I'm a cherry blossom. So are you. 
enjoy the view, and good luck. Thank you.